Transfinite induction is an extension of mathematical induction to well-ordered sets, for example to sets of ordinal numbers or cardinal numbers. Let P be a property defined for all ordinals α. Suppose that whenever P is true for all β less than α, then P is also true. Then transfinite induction tells us that P is true for all ordinals. Usually the proof is broken down into three cases. Zero case. Prove that P is true. Successor case. Prove that for any successor ordinal alpha plus 1, P follows from P for all B to less than alpha. Limit case. Prove that for any limit ordinal lambda, P follows from P for all B to less than lambda. All three cases are identical except for the type of ordinal considered. They do not formally need to be considered separately, but in practice the proofs are typically so different as to require separate presentations. Zero is sometimes considered a limit ordinal and then may sometimes be treated in proofs in the same case as limit ordinals. Transfinite recursion. Transfinite recursion is similar to transfinite induction, however, instead of proving that something holds for all ordinal numbers, we construct a sequence of objects, one for each ordinal. As an example, a basis for a vector space can be created by choosing a vector and for each ordinal alpha choosing a vector that is not in the span of the vectors. This process stops when no vector can be chosen. More formally, we can state the transfinite recursion theorem as follows. Transfinite recursion theorem. Given a class function g, v, v, there exists a unique transfinite sequence f, ord v such that f equals g for all ordinals alpha, where denotes the restriction of f's domain to ordinals less than alpha. As in the case of induction, we may treat different types of ordinals separately. Another formulation of transfinite recursion is the following. Transfinite recursion theorem. Given a set G1, and class functions G2, G3, there exists a unique function f, ord v such that, f equals G1, f equals G2, for all alpha ord, f equals G3, for all limit lambda 0. Note that we require the domains of G2, G3 to be broad enough to make the above properties meaningful. The uniqueness of the sequence satisfying these properties can be proven using transfinite induction. More generally, one can define objects by transfinite recursion on any well-founded relation R, relationship to the axiom of choice. Proofs or constructions using induction and recursion often use the axiom of choice to produce a well-ordered relation that can be treated by transfinite induction. However, if the relation in question is already well-ordered, one can often use transfinite induction without invoking the axiom of choice. For example, many results about Borel sets are proved by transfinite induction on the ordinal rank of the set. These ranks are already well-ordered, so the axiom of choice is not needed to well-order them. The following construction of the Vitali set shows one way that the axiom of choice can be used in a proof by transfinite induction. First, well order the real numbers, giving a sequence where beta is an ordinal with the cardinality of the continuum. Let v0 equal r0. Then let v1 equal r alpha 1, where alpha 1 is least such that r alpha 1 minus v0 is not a rational number. Continue, at each step use the least real from the R sequence that does not have a rational difference with any element thus far constructed in the V sequence. Continue until all the rails in the R sequence are exhausted. The final V sequence will enumerate the Vitali set. The above argument uses the axiom of choice in an essential way at the very beginning, in order to well order the rails. After that step, the axiom of choice is not used again. Other uses of the axiom of choice are more subtle. For example, a construction by transfinite recursion frequently will not specify a unique value for a alpha plus 1, given the sequence up to alpha. 
but will specify only a condition that a alpha plus 1 must satisfy, and argue that there is at least one set satisfying this condition. If it is not possible to define a unique example of such a set at each stage, then it may be necessary to invoke the axiom of choice to select one such at each step. For inductions and recursions of countable length, the weaker axiom of dependent choice is sufficient, because there are models of zamello frankel set theory of interest to set theorists that satisfy the axiom of dependent choice but not the full axiom of choice. The knowledge that a particular proof only requires dependent choice can be useful.